everybody, it's Daniel with Propelio here again. We're gonna do the mobile home investing course today. So I'm extremely excited to bring this to you. Mobile home investing is essentially how I got started uh, getting out of the rat race. I'd been doing flips, I'd done several things like that, but I had no passive income and it was mobile homes that gave me the passive income I needed to officially hang up my hat and say I'm out of the rat race. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with that terminology, essentially getting out of the rat race means you have passive income that exceeds your monthly expenses and that way you no longer have to work again. If you're interested in how I did that, mobile homes is how I did it. So real quick, we're gonna go through and I have actually broke my clicker, so let me get my clicker fixed real quick. Um, let me figure out how to get this plugged up. All right, I think that's working. Boom, so let me go ahead and go through the basics of CMA, covering my assets. As you can see here, we have disclosures. I hope that you read them, but essentially it's saying that I'm here to try to give you some of my background and some of my information, but before you go out and do anything, you need to go out and confirm that this is the right stuff for you. Make sure that you know, you've know you spoken with your attorneys, your legals, your financial advisors, all of those fancy people that I am not. I'm here just trying to expose your mind to the possibilities, and through this course, I'm going to go through and show you a little bit about what we plan on learning. Okay, I'm going to be showing you how to teach, how to, how to use mobile homes as personal property to generate like triple digit returns. My entry level property, I typically do not like making less than an 80% return on a mobile home. I typically won't even pull the trigger unless it's a triple digit return. And most of my mobile home investments hit that 120 to 180 120 to 180% return. So if you're talking to your private money, you're talking to X, Y, and Z, and you're like, man, I can get 8%, 9%, 12%, 20%, 20%. homes all day long, triple digit returns on the strategy that I'm gonna be showing you how to do. Uh, what I'm not gonna teach you though, is how to invest in mobile home parks, how to invest in RVs, how to invest in RV parks, modular homes, Mobile homes is real property because mobile homes can be real property or personal property. You'll learn more about that in this course. Those are not those are not going to be what I'm teaching you today. Are those all applicable strategies? Damn right they are. They're very good strategies. Mobile homes as real property, subdividing land, doing a little bit of development, great strategy for creating uh, creating a niche market. Uh, mobile home parks, modular homes, RV, all great investment strategies. But that's not what this class is about today. This class is going to be highlighting using mobile homes as personal property to generate cash flowing notes. Um, so some real quick facts about the mobile home industry. There's close to 22 million people living in them in the United States. So if you want to know how big your market is, how many you know mobile homes, how many people are actually interested in living in these in these little mobile homes, we've got about 22 million of them living in the United States right now. 10 and a half million mobile homes in the United States approximately. And we're looking at about 8% of the total national stock of housing and approximately 18% in some states of the housing market is mobile homes. So if I'm going into a state where we're looking at almost 18% of the homes available being modular homes or mobile homes, that's almost one out of every five homes being a mobile home. There's plenty of demand there. So if you've got some preconceived uh, stereotypes, notions, thought processes of man, you know, nobody wants to live in those things. They're just little, you know, tornado magnets or et cetera, et cetera. They're a big product. There's a lot of people using them. Warren Buffett being one of the largest investors into mobile homes, Clayton Homes, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, all have tremendous uh, inventory in the mobile home market. Yes communities, um, like just going and going and going. The demand is there. And if you know how to take advantage of that and you know how to move forward as a wise business person, lots of opportunities in mobile homes there. But all this data comes in as of about 2011 for the American House and Survey of the United States. So opportunity is there. Some real quick things, almost 40,000 land lease communities manufactured housing institute. 40,000 mobile home parks in the United States. That's essentially what I'm trying to say there. In the United States, there are 40,000 mobile home parks. That is where we're gonna be investing in. We're gonna be investing into mobile home parks. We're not gonna be buying the parks, we're just looking for mobile homes inside of mobile home parks to be investing in. And I keep using the term mobile home, and I really should get away from that moving forward through this course. The better term to use is gonna be manufactured home. 
um, that kind of changes around 1976. And while I say mobile home, I honestly should be saying manufactured home. So try and help me remember as I'm moving forward on this to say manufactured homes. But there are about 4.2 million estimated home sites. Um, home sites being, uh, I do believe where I got this data from being um, real property attached to land. There's about 4.2 million mobile homes attached to land that are not in parks. 34% uh, of new homes placed in communities. Um, so if I am going to a dealership to purchase a manufactured home, about a third of them are going to go into a mobile home park or a manufactured home park. They're not going on land. So a lot of these homes are going into mobile home communities, manufactured home communities. And there are 124 manufacturers in the United States alone. There is plenty of market here. You might not see it, you might not be aware of it, but how much time have you really focused into learning about manufactured homes? Here is some really good numbers for those of you that are curious as to what this market really looks like. There is plenty of demand there. Some background on myself in mobile homes. That is me up there, all fancified. But um, I've been playing around with mobile homes since about 2012. We're at 2009 now, so 2019. So I've got about seven years of experience in messing around with mobile homes. I have spent upwards of about $12,000 on my mobile home investing education. Uh, that comes through several mentors, through licensing, through several different aspects. But I have invested about $12,000 into my education, of which I'm going to be spending most of my day here with you trying to get my education and my experience transferred to you so that way you may be able to go out there and use my experience to help you move forward and get down the road. Um, I was a licensed mobile home retailer broker installer in the state of Texas. I went through, I got bonded, I got insured, created my entities. I did all of those wonderful things so that way I could do this business the right way legally, ethically, and go out and you know do what needs to be done to be a productive member of this investment community. Everybody that's out there watching and have seen me talk before, I speak highly on ethics and business. You need to be doing this the right way. You can take advantage of people and that is not what we are looking to teach you how to do. We as this community from Propelio, we do business the right way and I'm gonna teach you the right way to do this business. I did get licensed. You need to get licensed. If you're gonna be, depending on your state, your state's laws change. But in Texas, I, have to, I cannot sell more than one mobile home in a rolling 12 month period. And I'm not gonna get deep on this in this lesson, but if I wanna do more than that, I need to be licensed. That's why I went out and got licensed. So my goals for this course is you should be able to identify what governing bodies are regulating the manufactured housing industry within your state. I need you to go out there and seek that information because each individual state law is gonna change. I do not have the ability or the desire to go through and learn the laws of all 50 states just to teach that to you. I'm not investing right now in Idaho. I don't plan on investing in Idaho. And if you're in Idaho, guess what? You need to research law. You might be sitting there thinking to yourself, man, Daniel knows so much about real estate. Daniel knows so much about mobile homes. I did not know so much about mobile homes 10 years ago. I spent the time at night reading mobile home laws, reading chapter, what was it, chapter 94 of the Texas Property Code, reading tap, chapter 301 of the Texas Finance Code, MHSA 1201.03 or 10 TAC 80. There are a lot of rules revolving around mobile home investing in Texas. I read the laws. Do not let that intimidate you. Go out there, educate yourself, so that way you can perform. If you are an entrepreneur, if you are just now getting started in this and you want this to be an investing strategy of your own, commit the time to educate yourself on your own state so that way you can go out there and knowledgeably work on this industry, okay? Uh, I'm going to teach you some of the major dates associated within this industry. There are some key dates and times that are going to change the actual product that you're selling itself and you're gonna to need to be aware of those. I need you to understand what the differences between personal and real property are. Uh, what I mean there is personal property, when we talk about mobile homes, is essentially a mobile home that's still con considered a vehicle. I don't like using that term, but that's the best way to explain it to you. A mobile home is personal property and it could also be real property. It changes to real property when you, I'm not gonna say attaches to land, when you title the home with land. And we're gonna go full on in that. So if you're confused, great. I'm gonna teach you more about that here in a little bit. Just remember, 
There is a difference in how you title these properties. They can be titled as personal or personal property, and you need to know the difference between the two when you're investing in these. All right, going on, you're gonna need to learn how to identify the plates and labels. That is gonna be the information that you're gonna get to determine who manufactured the home, where it was originally installed, what are some of the key features of this home. You're gonna find all that information out and it's gonna be on the labels and plates. You're gonna learn that. You're also gonna learn how to find deals, how to source them, how to market to them, how to go about, um, you know, actually, you know, doing the business. You know, if you're not out there marketing and finding deals, you'll never do the business no matter how much you learn. So I'm gonna teach you how I found deals and you'll be able to spawn off on that and go out and do some of your own. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna show you how to establish some park criteria and work with park managers. Uh, in this business, what I'm gonna be teaching you today, almost all of the investing you're gonna be doing in these homes are gonna be coming in and out of mobile home parks. Uh, what I'm gonna be teaching is not really gonna be applicable to mobile homes on land. So if you're wanting to learn mobile homes on land, this is not the class for you. But if you're interested in mobile homes at all, I still say watch this because I might expose you to a different thought process that you never even knew existed. And that's what we're gonna go through and do today. Um, I need you to understand who your sellers are. It's going to help you build rapport. It's going to help you establish communication and build a small network of people around you to work with. I'm going to show you what to look at when you're walking through a property. Right now, just looking at this house alone, I know that there are a lot of people that are looking at this right now are going to sit there and be saying to themselves, There's that, that house needs to be completely updated. I mean, that carpet's out of date. We we're talking about purpley, maroon, magenta, blah, blah, blah. We've got all this gold. We've got horrible looking for mica countertops. We've got linoleum floors. We've got all this weird window stuff. Guess what? That is a beautiful mobile home. That is the home that you are wanting to invest in. There is no way around it. That home right there is the home you want. That is a slam dunk mobile home. We're not going through and remodeling these, putting in granite, laminate floors, brand new fixtures, all that stuff. No, I'm gonna teach you how to walk through these homes and determine what it is that you're looking for. Title research, you need to know that these homes are, do not have any encumbrances, any liens. I'm gonna show you how to do that in the very least in the state of Texas. Remember, I'm a Texas investor. My experience comes from Texas, but the information that I'm giving you still applies to your state. You're just gonna have to learn how to do it within your own state. Like I said, I'm not investing in Idaho. I'm not gonna teach you how to pull title in Idaho. You need to figure that out on your own. Uh, calculating profit and structuring, uh, structuring um, calculating profit and structuring offers. You're gonna need to know how to run the numbers on this. Mobile homes is strictly a numbers business. And I believe that any investing truly is a numbers business. You need to understand what your numbers are and how to figure them out. So there is gonna be some calculator to this. Uh, you're gonna need to understand how to use a financial calculator, whether that be a 10B2 or a 10C. I will show you how to use that in this course because it's gonna be very important for you structuring these notes to be able to qualify and use a financial calculator. So stay tuned and if you don't have that, pay attention as we move forward. Uh, we're gonna go through how to close the transaction. You know, what paperwork do I need? How do I transfer title? How do I do all of this type of stuff? What else are we gonna learn? We're gonna learn how to manage the repairs, some of the repairs that you need to be doing to these homes. I'm gonna go through, show you how to find buyers, how to find buyers uh, through online resources, through bandit signs, through flyers, through referral networks. I'm gonna break all of that down so that way you as well can learn how not only to buy them, but how to sell them, how to structure the sale. What happens if that buyer ends up defaulting on you? That's gonna change all across the United States, but I'm gonna try and give you my basic understandings of what happens. And then an action plan for you to execute once you get done with this course. There's no point in you going through and watching these hours and hours and hours of video that I'm about to give you. Information that I've spent massive amounts of time, effort, energy, money acquiring, and I'm giving this to you. Remember, the Propelio Academy is about abundance. I want y'all to learn. I want y'all to grow. I want y'all to become ethical members of this community. I want you to succeed. So take everything that we've done here Take the action plan that we put forward for you, go out there and apply it, and I truly look forward to seeing some success cases come out of this. Shoot me over your deals when you're done, post them in the Propelio forums. I want to see you win, and if you're out there winning because of this information, please at the very least come back and say, hey, Propelio Academy, thank you for teaching this to me. It's now part of my investing strategies that I'm using to create massive amounts of gains through passive income generated through notes on personal property on manufactured homes. That is the goal of this. I want you to win. Go out there, kill it, and let's move on.
Oh, I said move on. We still got more to talk about. What else we got here? My goals for this course. Look at me. I, I get on these rabbit trails where I just start talking. There's more here. Uh, there may, there, this, there is no may. There is going to be governing bodies that are going to regulate your, um, your investing inside the state. So some things you may need to be paying attention to is most states that I've heard of, there are limitations on the number of manufactured homes that you can personally sell without a license. In the state of Texas, it's one. I think Ohio, it's like four. Figure that out. Check into it. If you start selling more than that, you become a dealer. And once you become a dealer, you have different regulations that you have to handle. Read up on that. Investigate. You're going to need to know some financing regulations. You may or may not be able to just go out and just generate these notes. You're going to need to figure those types of things out. Once again, I'm giving you all the information that I have. But before you go out and do any of this, you need to seek legal counsel, financial counsel, everything else in between. Figure this out. But don't let little hiccups stop you. Don't go out there and be like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. I can't do that. If you have that mindset of letting little hurdles stop you, you're not going to be successful at this. You need, as an entrepreneur, to learn how to take objections and get around them. No other way around it. Any successful business owner out there is going to tell you the exact same thing. If you get stuck on little problems, you'll never, you'll never succeed. Little problems are these. Figure these out. Figure out how to adapt and overcome. And then the last one is there's going to be disclosures. In the state of Texas, there's a considerable amount of disclosures that you have to provide when you're doing this business, especially as a licensee. I myself was an RBI. I had like 27 items that I had to have on a checklist of things that I was disclosing to make sure that I was doing CYA. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you're looking at that and you're like, wow, the states were making you do all of that. In my opinion, that's a good thing because if I do those things, then I've covered my ass. And who else wants to be out there just doing business and leaving themselves exposed to all kinds of potential litigation? Go out there, do this business the right way. It's not that hard. Figure it out, apply what you got there, and we're good to go. So that's going to be it for the introduction to mobile homes class. Once again, I hope that you go out there and apply this. Give us some of your, your, your wins here in the Propelio forums. If you ask questions, drop them below. All Other than that, man, much love. Have a good one.